Okay. Um, for the reviews, uh, we start at the beginning and work through so we don't jump back and forth unless you need to. If you just have one question you want answered and then leave, that's fine. Does anybody have like just one question they're interested in? Everybody see okay? Okay, first question. Question? Um, the 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 um, quizzes are going to be multiple choice, and I gave you exams, right? So they they'll be basically like that. There there won't be there will not be um, any graphs or anything on the one tomorrow. There will be graphs on the qu uh, exam, not the quiz. No questions about this? Okay, what about any topic? No. The primary cell wall does not contain DNA. Remind me to repeat the questions when you ask them, please. Everybody just come here to listen. Other people ask questions, which is not an unusual thing to do, but somebody's got to ask questions. Surely you've looked at it enough to have questions. Nothing on scientific method? That's sort of cut and dry, more or less. So let me go to the next one then. What about on growth? Yeah, let me pull it. Where are the cells actually, where's the division occur is the question. Yeah. So the red basically there and there is where the divisions occur and then the divisions are also going to occur in these these uh, lateral uh, buds. I'm sorry? In, in here, these are the, we talked about the secondary buds, so if you cut the top off here, if you cut this off, then these start growing, okay? And we'll talk more about those when we talk about apical dominance. So basically this stain here is picking up um, division. So you can see where the really dark red parts here. And this, by the way, remember these are three-dimensional, so this is a leaf maybe coming out from behind. And when they made that thin section, you only got just the very the tip of the, not the leaf, the tip of that meristem. And then at the other end, it's not as easy to see, but most of the divisions occur just right here. So you have almost a very, you have a very, very small space where cells actually divide to produce other cells. And then you move back here, and you can see these a little bit better. And let me flip back up here. And you can see here a little bit better than you can on this one. You can see where you can start seeing these cells actually start to elongate. Are there more meristems? Where are there, or there, there are meristems? Um, I think when we talked about it, we talked about this is basically the apical meristem. The very tip top, if you were to look down onto a plant, you would, what you're looking at is 
an artichoke, basically. Okay, um, yes, you do have divisions in the, um, that produce the xylem and the phloem. Not really, not, not really in terms of uh, a growth up and down, which is what we're talking about, it's polarity, growth up, growth up and down. So the, there's a meristem here, these are meristems, and then if we went on down here, we'd see meristems. But because of uh, oxen, which we'll talk about much later, uh, this produces oxen that keeps these from coming out. So, you know, if you want a bushy plant, you can go, in, in a lot of plants, you can pinch off the, the very top, the apical meristem. And then you get all of these buds to start growing these. These meristems start growing. Again, if you, it, it, you're basically looking down on an artichoke. And it's not an artichoke, but it looks like an artichoke. And between each of the, the leaves or whatever those things on an artichoke are, there'd be a meristem. And, and then you take that and then you just expand that up to 10 feet or whatever would basically be what you would see after the cell division. So like I said, by the time a corn plants a foot tall, everything is there. Almost all the divisions are finished. And only, so you can get in there and you dig out and see little tiny bits that will be tassels. And, and it grows, elongates tremendously. And then you have the final differentiation of what the tassels and what the anthers are going to be. Um, but yeah, plants grow up and down. Tremendous amount of elongation, thousands of times elongation versus the size of the cell. You think about when the cell divides, it's of no size. It's very small. You know, I want to say no size, it's kind of size, but it's, it's extremely small. Next question. No, I think we're through cell membranes, so that'd be cell walls and cell membranes and uh, what? Experimental design mainly. So we don't need to know the interior? Not on this, not on the, not on this quiz. Okay. It's just that it's, you know, like I said, like I think I told you, I, I'm going to cover everything two or three times. And it just, it just gives you just a notion of what the cell wall looks like. Um, that you've got these two primary cell walls separated by this middle lamella, which is sort of the glue that holds them together. Uh, and then we, we, you know, we talked about plasma desmida when we talked about organelles, but, uh, but it's, uh, in, this, in this case, we're talking about the, the holes, which are the pits. And so here, this is just the cell wall material. And so if you're going to have a membrane-lined tube between cell and cell, well, the cell wall's got to be, be gone, and that's called a pit. It makes sense. It's a pit, just like a hole in the, in, in the, in the cell. And then the secondary cell walls always grow inside the primary cell walls. And in this... Uh, in this in this picture this is this is the primary cell wall material this pink is supposed to be the middle lamella so this would be a primary cell wall right here and then that would be a primary cell wall and the pink yeah it's just think about it like bubble gum sticking the two cells together Next question. Where does translation occur in the cell? And translation occurs in the uh, cytoplasm, but we haven't got to that yet. That'll be Friday or Monday.
Now, when I say we haven't gotten to that, I mean, we, we talked about ribosomes, but yeah. that's not on the quiz tomorrow. And, you know, you should know what translation is anyway. What's the difference between the xylem and the phloem? What's one difference between the xylem? What's a big difference between the xylem and the phloem? Right. What is an even bigger difference between the xylem and the phloem? A, a, a fundamental difference between the xylem and the phloem. Mm -hmm. What's the most fundamental difference between the xylem and the phloem? Xylem is open pipes, and the phloem is living tissue. It's it's got a protoplast in it. It's living, and so that and that's where you know this this course is really circular because we talked about this and we talked about membranes, and and almost everything in the phloem is moved by proteins that are embedded in the in the membranes. Very very little water goes up without cross and cell membranes and minerals do some minerals do but for the most part anything in the phloem a protein grabs it and moves it into the next cell not everything but a lot of things and then the, the sieve plate or the, the the two parts are the companion cell and then the sieve plate. And the companion cell has a nucleus, and the sieve plate doesn't. It's just, uh, it's just uh, the sieve tube. It's just, uh, it's living, but it doesn't. But the companion cell provides all of the proteins and things that it needs to carry out its function. Next question. I think I'm still recording. Yep, recording. Lower the volume up just a little bit. Any questions about this? Are we going to be um, really discussing, at least for this first exam, um, the cohesion tension theory? Or I'm not sure yet. On, I don't know how far we're going to. I don't know when you guys are going to decide when you want the exam, okay. and that's going to determine what we cover. Okay. We'll go to the next one then. What was it? Let's see. Let's see. Oh. This one. Any questions about this material? So every plant cell has a primary cell wall. Yeah. And it can develop, it's the only way, like the secondary wall, is that just wood? Secondary, well, okay. Secondary cell wall can be, the secondary cell wall can be, it has cellulose in it too. And uh, most of the time, secondary cell wall has lignin in it. And we're going to declare lignin being what makes wood wood. I mean, it, that's simplistic, but it's... Uh, this, once, once the cell is, is, is grown to where it's supposed to be, then if you think about it, the xylem is going to put down secondary cell walls. And that has to happen while the cell is still alive. And then as the secondary cell walls are, being, are produced, then finally the cell just sort of falls apart and you have the pipe left behind. And so in a tree, that big mass of stuff in the center is 
xylem that's no longer transporting water and then also a lot of xylem that is transporting water. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't think I'd ask that, but anything that's not really woody. Yeah. You can think of a primary cell, a primary cell wall um, is like a burlap bag, and it really actually even looks like a burlap bag. And then if you take that burlap bag, and which let's say is very flexible rebar, and then you add the cement, which is the pectin. Again, I'm being simplistic, but then that, that burlap bag, it's still there, but now it's embedded in this amorphous matrix that is not going to move again. It, now, it still can you know, bend. It's still going to be able to bend in the wind a bit. Uh, but once that pet lignin is added, that's it. And, and there are all kinds of secondary cell walls. There are all kinds of, of just, there are books, you, co uh, coffee table books, that are just pictures of xylem and other secondary cell walls that, that people have just made these really pretty pictures of. Anything else about here? Anything else? There, see, that's exact. That, this is what a cell wall looks like. And what you're, out, what you're actually looking at here are some pits. Nothing else? Going once, going twice. You know, the, I, I want, I, the quizzes are not very difficult, but the quizzes together count as an exam. The average grade on the quizzes is about Okay, the average total grade on the quizzes is about 70, which um, I, I, you know, I would say I would think it would be higher, but it also depends on all the other stuff that you're taking. Of course, like, you know, you're, you're not only tested on your ability to know the subject, you're tested on your ability to take three tests in a week. You know, so. The quizzes are basically a for, a forcing you, if I give quizzes, the overall average in the class is much higher. The class average is about 10 points higher if I give quizzes. Yes, sir. Right. Calcium, right, calcium is required. Let's go so, but that slide right, there, right here. There's, there's, I mean, what okay. Okay, you've got the cellulose right here. These are sort these are these gray long things are the cellulose. Okay, then you have and you don't need to worry about what these things are, but they're yeah. different kinds of pectins. So these are all uh, interactions, molecular interactions, and calcium is needed. If you look right here, here you have some of these, here's some uh, carbohydrates, okay? And then the calcium actually, the Ca plus 2, and these are negatives, helps hold them together, okay? So, yeah, so, so uh, today we talked about proteins and that plants and animals need minerals. Okay, so depending on, upon what the mineral is doing, in this case, the calcium helps stabilize these interactions. 
So when the balloon starts blowing up, you know, when, you know, remember at any given time, if it's a normal cell, it's got water going in it. It has water being pumped in and that pushes against the cell wall. Okay. And part of that force that keeps it from coming apart relies on calcium, those calcium ions to act to stabilize these carbohydrates together, okay? So in, in the case, and in, in I put this up because this is something you see a lot around here, uh, is that the calcium deficiencies tend to be on the bottom end, the last part of the fruit to grow. And so what you're seeing here is without the calcium, then these things can slide apart easier. And the result is the balloon can expand until the point of where the cell membrane explodes. Now, telling you that, and, and here was a, a link to this, um, we don't know exactly what, you know, this is the 2005 version of the cartoon of what the cell wall looks like and I think okay, I, I haven't I, I didn't know I don't think I gave you the updated version there's like a 2009 or 2010 and that may be the one that I'm, I'm giving you a a, a, a a reading assignment about extension and it may be in that I'm, I'm not sure I haven't given you that assignment yet that'll be before the uh, exam it's just a two-page thing so uh, this is what was in the book, I think. And these are all cartoons. But then this one is more, a little bit more elaborate and it's a little bit more because now um, there are mutants of the cellulose synthase. So you've got Arabidopsis mutants that, that have uh, messed up cell walls. So, you know, we know a little bit more and more. In fact, Dr. Kyle was working on one of the mutants, the cell wall mutants. Now, with, is that just at the maturity of the fruit that the, that the calcium? Well, it can, it can be, I mean, it can be, you know, it can affect the plant. But um, because of the temperatures and the way, the way the plant grows, it tends to, the calcium tends to peter out toward the end. Why does, why does temperature? It has to do with loss of, uh, of water and also calcium is not very mobile. Calcium can't, we haven't talked about minerals, but calcium doesn't move very easily. Okay. So it can end up wiping it out. Okay. And then is there any, this is, this is not really important to, to the exam, but is there any way, like you can boot, like is there anything to supplement into uh, like, like a fertilizer that will supplement calcium? Yeah, you can add, uh, the question is can you add, yeah, you can add, uh, what do you add for calcium? Um, what is it? I don't even remember now. But yeah, you can you can you can add calcium, and and people have even tried calcium sprays, and I don't think the sprays work. You know, basically, this is a, just a real. This is a commonly encountered real world example of what can happen. And you've probably all seen this. If you've grown tomatoes, you've definitely seen it. Anything else about this? Nope. We go to membranes. You know the hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions? And I just said that backwards, I think. Hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. So this thing is incredible. Incre even though it's incredibly thin, it's incredibly stable. It's never going to turn inside out. That's just not going to happen. That, that, that's, you know, you can, you could, you know, if you could, you could stick your arm through a membrane and it would form just right around your arm. 
and you could pull your arm out and little vesicles might come out, but it would go back to being a membrane. And a uh, reading that you're going to have is uh, what appears to be one of the reasons why there are cold sensitive plants is, and, and I use the example of what's the difference between lard and cooking oil. At room temperature, lard solid, and that's a dead membrane. These membranes, it's called the fluid mosaic because the membranes are fluid. And they have these proteins that are in there that are actually can move around a little bit. Some, when we talk about respiration, there's actually a protein that grabs electrons and then physically moves to another protein. And so even though if this was a cell, you would barely be able to see the cell membrane. It would be so thin. You'd be able to see all the proteins, just all the proteins sticking out of it. Questions? <clears throat> Membranes? Phospholipids, they have a phosphate group on the hydrophilic end, basically the charged end as opposed to the just neutral carbon end. You do not need to know these individuals. You, you need to know the general structure with phosphate and then the uh, uh, hydrophobic. You don't need to know the individual uh, kinds of uh, fossil lipids that are around. This one? Yeah. Okay. A, uh, a peripheral protein is one that is um, loosely associated with the membrane. And an uh, anchor protein is a protein that is literally covalently linked to the membrane. And uh, I'm trying to think, I can't think of. what an anchor protein is. I can't think of one. Yeah, peripheral Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're bound in the lipids. They're bound into the membrane. Uh, and then the integral proteins go completely through. And so, you know, we've talked now several times about the fact that things that get into cells are grabbed by proteins and pulled through. So if we go to this one, then these are all integral membranes. <sighs> integral proteins, I'm sorry. And they can get pretty, uh, I think I tried that and then of course bombed out. And they can get quite uh, elaborate. And I'll try to bring this up one day when I have some time and show you because there's a really neat channel protein and you can actually turn it sideways and actually look through it and see that it's actually got a, a channel in it. And then think about, you were talking about enzymes, you know, these are not enzymes but they do do something. And so for this molecule to go from here to here, sometimes it still has to have some kind of a attraction here. This this molecule bounces around until it hits the right place, which then may cause it to change shape a little bit and then basically spit it through. And then in the active transport, ATP is required. Okay. And actually most transport requires ATP. 
and we haven't mentioned yet, there are even aquaporons, which are transport proteins that transport water. And when they were first found in plants, nobody believed it. Because the idea that you would transport water just doesn't make sense. But there's good reasons for that. Okay, questions? There will be 10 questions, each one worth 1.25 points apiece. And I'm going to give you all the same questions. I'm not going to give you, you know, just a bank of questions. So you'll all have the same questions. But don't cheat. I'm sorry? I think it will. I, uh, we're going to go over it on Friday. Um, when when I get when I gave them in class, it's uh, uh, you, you would take it and would take it in the class and go over it real fast. So we'll go over the quizzes. Will always be the day before the day before the sec the next quiz will be the day before the last class day before the exam. Okay. So your quizzes will always be on off days. Your exams will always be on class days. Okay. Yeah, we'll go over them Friday. Yeah, you'll get them. You'll get them. Uh, you know, because a lot of times when I go them, I realize I made a mistake. You know, if I if I great if I ever do an exam without a mistake, that'll be the first time ever I've done one. It's a lot better now because I can't add with anything, and you go down and you count all the points up and. Uh, you know, that's why I go into that in the first, you know, I, if, you, if you find a mistake, then you can get that fixed really quickly. Don't wait till the end of the semester, because um, we had one year where we used to team teach this, and uh, an exam bumped everybody's grade almost uh, up a letter, and I got off the fifth floor, and there was like 30 people waiting for me to go over their exams. I'm not going to do that again. If you find a mistake, I mean, if you find a mistake, somebody's going to let me know. And there will be mistakes. You know, I mean, I have to load these things up, and I have to put an asterisk by the right answer, and sometimes there may be more than one answer that's correct. Or you can come and argue. If you don't, if you don't argue for points, you're definitely not going to get them. You know. And there are a lot as well. This is the answer, but, well, this could be the answer, too. You know, this is the way it is. You don't, you don't upset, actually, you upset me more if you don't come and ask for points. Anything else? Uh, the opening will, uh, I haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm going to have said, I will, it'll be open for 12 hours. I will probably open it in the morning, but not early. So I'll probably either open it at 9 or 10, and then there'll be 12 hours later. That should give everybody plenty enough time to uh, do it. I may come in and do it tomorrow, so it may be 9 or 10 before I open it. Most people give them, start them at noon or whatever until midnight, but you guys have a preference? 12 hours should be enough time. You've got 20 minutes. You will have 20 minutes to take the quiz, which is, uh, which is exactly the same amount of, the amount of time I give people in class to take the quiz. And for the exams, you'll have 50 minutes, which is the class time. So everybody has the same level playing field. Yes, ma'am? About the exam. Take the exam online, multiple choice. And then there's a take-home part that we get, like, is it short answer or anything? There's a take-home part that I can tell you one of the questions is going to be for you to describe a tannosome, which is a brand new organelle that's just been found. Oh, because you want us to look it up? Yeah, that's right. It's a learning experience. It's, it's, not, so it's not a memorized thing. It's, it, the questions will be, you know, I, I can tell you now, it'll be about, you know, you'll have to upload a picture of a tannosome and discuss what the, the tannosome was found like less than a year ago in, in it's where tannins are stored in cells, I'll tell you that. So there'll be that kind of question, you know. Online, submit it to me online. Mm -hmm. 
after you take the, uh, the exam, will you be able to review the correct answers? You should be able to. Now, I've been, I've been up there twice uh, already because things that I'm supposed to be able to do, no one can do. So I will say you should be able to, but there, you know, this is a brand, brand new system. And it's becoming a bit cumbersome. If, cause you will have graphs on the exam. Okay, so I can copy the graph and stick it into the exam. No, that doesn't work. I've been up there and they said, yes, it does. Oh, we don't have a clue why it's not working. So uh, when I say you can do it, if not, you will get the correct answers. For the own, uh, so we, uh, Friday morning, the first thing we're going to do is go over the quiz, which will be recorded. So you'll have that. So if you're taking the online portion, I'm sorry I couldn't do the live part tonight. I, I, this, I've got to get, it, you know, the connection just kept failing all afternoon. Uh, but the, the only difference is if you're online and you're not here to ask questions during class. But you'll, you know, you'll get, I'm going to start pulling out the question parts and putting that as a separate file until you guys understand that you should look at the first part of each lecture even if you don't want to review the lecture, okay? Now, I can tell you that, and I can tell you that 90-some percent of the lectures will be looked at within 24 hours before the exam, because that's what I would do, too. So, for the exam, will we have 12-hour period? Yeah, yeah. So right, once you start it. And you won't be able to start and stop. It's going to be a 50-minute period. So you'll have within a 12-hour period, probably, I'm thinking 10 to 10, or maybe it'll be 12 to 12. That way, I don't think anybody's going to be working at midnight. And remember, your IP addresses should be unique. And if they're not, that's like a, a massive problem. Do what? Your IP address on your computer. In other words, if you and, you and someone are sitting right together and taking the exam online, then that's going to show me that you're actually in the same place. And that will flag the exams. I've been on honor council, and that's one of the more common things that happens. I won't say common, but... No idea. How many questions? There'll be some questions, there'll be three points. There'll be some questions, most of the questions will be one point. But if you looked at the exams I've passed out, you can see I can ask fairly complicated questions on a, and give you multiple choices. You will have, you will have, uh, you will have figures probably that have nothing to do with plant physiology for you to interpret. Whatever I happen to read about when I'm finishing the exam up. It's pretty cool because I can upload dozens and dozens of questions and then decide which ones to use. Anything else? Going, going. Okay. We'll see you guys then. What is today? Wednesday, Friday. And I am done. <laughs>